In this tutorial we're going to create a bone animation. Now to do that let's create a folder first for our animations. I like to keep all my animations in separate folders just for cleanliness so let's go ahead and create another folder called Chef and let's create a bone animation. So we create the bone animation data. You can think of this bone animation data as the blueprint that actually builds the animations in your scene. So let's rename this to Chef. You can see over in the inspector here, there's a button to open the animation editor. There's one to open the control panel, but we already have that open. You have a mesh import scale. This is useful for making your animation larger or smaller, depending on your world size. At a scale of one, it'll come in pixel perfect. One pixel equals one world unit. That's really great for 2D, but if you have 3D, uh, 3D world, then that's going to be really big. So you might want to scale that down. So let's go ahead and open the bone animation editor. You can see here we have a bone hierarchy over in this corner and animation clips in this corner and that's all we can do to begin with. So let's create a, uh, a bone hierarchy. You can see you start with a root bone. That is always there. You can add a new bone by clicking this plus sign and it just adds a new bone. You can do that several times and it just adds them all to the root. To rename you just click on it, right click, go rename bone and let's just give this bone a name. You can do the same thing here. And that's, let's see how you create bones. Um, to move bones around, you can just drag and drop. So if I click on the head, I can drag it and it turns green wherever it's going to drop. And I release, and now the head is attached to the body. Um, the arm, let's go ahead and attach that to the body as well. Now you can automatically add bones to a parent by right clicking and go to add bone, and that automatically parents it. You can also rename really fast by clicking the R button once a bone is highlighted, that renames it and you can name it there. So I'll go ahead and just create the rest of the bone hierarchy. Okay, so now I have a bone structure built. You can see I've attached eyebrows to the head and I've just made an eyebrows bone, but uh, the actual eyebrows will be attached to that. That way I can raise both eyebrows at the same time if I want. Um, I put the weapon and the hand on the arm. I have kerchiefs and legs. You can see that's the full bone structure. If you want to look at a full bone structure you can look at the animation example in the Rise of the Doe game. Now that I have a bone structure set up I can go and create an animation clip. Click the plus sign you can see a new clip is added. The timeline shows up now and the main animation window shows up as well. In the timeline there's some options here to set uh, the animation clips properties but we'll get to that later. Uh, first I'm going to rename this clip. Let's right click and rename. It's called a stand. We can also hit the R key and that'll do the same thing just like on bones. So now you see we have keys that we can set and there's always a key zero for every bone. Uh, so what we're going to do now, first what I like to do is to set the atlases for all the bones. Easiest way to do that, we could do that bone by bone and let's just show you how to do that. Click on a keyframe and you can see what happens is the keyframe properties show up. So if we want to set this to an image, we'd click the type of image. We'd select the atlas. Click the chef atlas. Click on the texture button. And since we're doing the body bone, we're going to click the body texture. And you can see it shows up in the animation editor now. I'm dragging this around in this window by clicking the middle mouse button and pulling around. You can also zoom with the middle mouse button. You can also zoom up here but I find it's easier. Wherever your mouse is, it'll zoom around that point. So this makes it really easy to zoom like this. If you want to go back to the original position, you can click that. You can also click times one to get it back to original size. I'm going to move this up a bit though. So that's how to set a texture on one bone. But that could be kind of tedious to do that for all bones. Since all of our bones in this animation are going to be using the same atlas, except for the weapon, I'm just going to go ahead and click all the bones so they're highlighted, the keyframes are highlighted. I'll right click on this, click set atlases, change the keyframe type to image, change the atlas to chef, and then click update. So now each of these bones has the chef atlas set. So now we need to go through and just set the texture. So on the head, we'll click the head bone, hat, we'll click the hat, eyebrows, 
Actually, eyebrows is just a transform. We don't want an image there, so I'm going to set that back to transform. What that does is just let me move things around that are attached to it without actually having an image on it. So the eyebrow right, eyebrow left, and so on. Okay, so now I have all the bones set, all the texture set on the bones, except for weapon. I had set that to the chef, but my weapon is not actually in the chef uh, atlas, so I'm going to change this to my weapons atlas. And then I can select my weapon here, so let's just select the knife. Okay, so now we have our bone set, our texture set. You can see they're all just kind of a jumbled mess right now. What I like to do first off is just kind of drag things around. You can drag by clicking in this little square, which is a X and Y drag, or you can drag using the individual X and Y axis. So I'm just going to click everything and drag it around. Okay, so that's all our pieces. So I'm going to start with the legs. I think that's the easiest place to start. Let's go back to this and move this up here. So let's click on legs, the first keyframe. They're kind of hidden behind the body here, so let's place them. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, so I'm going to place it on the x-axis. That will be the ground and the leg right. Put that here. And we'll click on the waist. Move the waist here. You can see our legs are a little off. And they're in front. We'll go back and set all the depths in a second, but uh, we're just kind of getting the positioning right now. So let's scroll back up to the top. Click on the body. Now the waist is attached to the body. Or the legs are attached to the body too. Actually, I don't want the waist attached to the body, so I'm going to attach it to the root. Same with the leg. Legs. That way they're all separate. When I move the body, it doesn't move the legs. You can see I did that just by moving the bones to the root. That takes it away from whatever parent it was attached to. See, now I'm just kind of building my chef here. Again, ignoring the depth. We'll go back and fix that. Okay, so we now have a basic alignment of the images for the chef. So now we're going to set the depths for each of these. Now the way you think of depths is just kind of think of the farthest texture in the back first and we'll set that depth first. So in this particular case the farthest texture in the back would probably be the right arm. So we'll go to the right arm over here and we'll set the depth. We'll set it really high. Let's say 20. We don't have that many textures so that should be good. So now it's in the background. So then the next texture that would be in the background would probably be the hand, right hand. So we'll set that at 19. And then the weapon at 18. So these three objects are in the far background. Now it'll probably be this leg here. So we can click on that and go 17. Okay. So now we have the depth set. Let's kind of flesh out his positioning a little better. So the legs move this leg out, this leg out. It's got a little wider stance that way. Now the waist, let's move it down just a bit. Scroll up, move the body down. Let's move the arms into a better position. I kind of want that back kerchief a little farther back, so let's let's deepen it a bit so it's behind the arm. That way we can move our arm where it needs to be. other arm. Let's move the hands. And the weapon. Let's rotate this hand a bit. Rotation you can do by clicking on this circle. That's a real easy way to do it. And the weapon. You'll notice these exclamation marks. That just means that you've set properties of animation curves that only have one key. So those properties won't actually show in your animation because it doesn't have enough keys. Once we set another key over here, 
those will go away as long as we capture those properties. And I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. Let's go ahead and make the last frames exactly like the first now that we have the first set just like we want it. So we'll double click on frame 20 and it highlights all the frames. You can see this if I expand this a bit. And let's right click and do duplicate first keyframes. That's the first ones in the animation clip. So now we have the first and last keyframes are the same. That gives us a nice symmetrical uh, property to this animation clip. Now you'll see the exclamation marks are gone because we now have at least two keyframes for the properties. But he's just standing there. He's not doing anything. This slider here shows the time of the animation. Nothing happens in the animation. Well, it is actually happening, but nothing's moving, so it looks like he's just standing still. So let's add a little bit of uh, movement to him. So let's click on the body. Let's click maybe on frame 5. Now we can insert a new frame or add a keyframe here. We'll just add a blank keyframe. That sets up a keyframe with no properties attached to it. So let's go ahead and add in image scale x and y and once we do that you can see these gizmos show up if we just had x it would just have the x gizmo just y just the y gizmo but if we have both we get x y and the uniform scale and we want it to be on image scale if we go to local scale there's no keyframe set so you won't see anything but if we go back to image scale they're there so let's go ahead and make them breathe by dragging on the uniform scale makes his body expand a bit let's click on 10 and go blank again Go to image scale, scale it back a bit, go to 15. Now you can set a blank keyframe automatically by clicking on the B button. That'll set a blank keyframe as well. So let's go ahead and do another one. Expand them again. Now if we drag, you can see it go bigger, get smaller, go bigger, get smaller. And if we loop this at five frames per second, we can play the animation by clicking on the play button. And just let it go. You see he kind of just stands there breathing, doing nothing really. Let's give him a little more motion. Let's make his arms. Let's put a keyframe here. Instead of blank, we'll right click and just do a position rotation keyframe. That's a shortcut to blank, then adding those key properties. So you can see it, it create a new frame and then it add the local, local position and the rotation. So we can move the arm around, rotate it down, Let's do the same thing. You can shortcut this with a P button. Click on P, it does that. I could go back up, P again, go back down. Let's do the same thing for the right arm. Okay, so now when we play, let's move him back to the beginning. You can see his arms go up and down. but his head's kind of static, so let's work on his head now. When he breathes in, we'll kind of move his head up. When he exhales, we'll move it back down. So now when we play. I have the eyebrows backwards, I just realized. So I'm going to move this one over here, this one here, that looks a little better, but we'll have to change the end as well because you'll see that they cross. So what we'll do is right click or click on both of those then right click and duplicate first keyframes and it's asking do I want to overwrite and I'll pick yes. So now the first and last are the same. And that's basically how you set up an animation.